10, 9, ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Uh, Houston, we have a problem. Uh, okay. We copy you and are on standby. Over. Uh, Houston, we've discovered unanswered questions about spacesuits and thermal energy from middle schoolers, and they're, uh, just floating untethered here in space. Please advise. Over. Uh, roger that. Contain those questions to the best of your ability, and direct them to, uh, MIT professor Deva Newman immediately. She and her students are designing the spacesuits of the future. Do you copy? Over. Uh, we copy that, Houston. And finally, there are some thermal energy questions that have been floating out in space. I'm going to send them around and I'd like you to answer them, please. How do you test for the conditions of space here on Earth? We don't have Earth's gravity in space, but there's a lot of other ways to mimic the conditions of space here on Earth. If we're studying how to keep an astronaut warm, we might take them to Antarctica. If we're testing how people walk without gravity, we take our astronauts to NASA's Neutral Buoyancy Lab. That's a big pool with a replica of the International Space Station in it. These types of environments on Earth help us pretend we're on the space station, on the surface of the moon, or even on Mars. How do spacesuits protect from the sun's radiation? Ha! Huh. Well, we have good news and bad news about radiation. The sun gives off two forms of radiation. The first is thermal radiation, which is the heat that comes off of anything warm, like a hot potato. <laughs> the good news is that we can protect astronauts from this by using special fabrics that shield them from that warm sunlight. The second form of radiation from the sun is ionizing radiation. The bad news is that ionizing radiation damages your cells. Earth's magnetic field protects us on the ground from this, but the further astronauts travel from Earth, the more protection they need because that magnetic field weakens. To shield astronauts from that ionizing radiation, spacesuits use a material called polyethylene, which is used in shopping bags and toys. But we need an awful lot of it to keep astronauts safe in deep space. So a lot of people are working hard to think up new ways that we can protect our astronauts. How are spacesuits designed to protect astronauts from extreme temperatures? The reason a fan cools you off on a hot day is because the air blows heat away from your body. But in space, there is no air. An astronaut's body generates a lot of heat inside their spacesuit. Plus, there is heat coming from sunlight, but there is no air to carry the heat away from the astronaut's body. So traveling in space can get very toasty. To prevent them from getting too hot, spacesuits are white to help reflect sunlight. They also have an outer layer of insulating Kevlar fabric, similar to steelworkers' gloves, and rubber silicone padding on the palms and fingers of the gloves to prevent the fabric from melting or tearing when the astronauts touch hot surfaces. But space can also get as cold as minus 250 degrees Fahrenheit, or minus 156 degrees Celsius. Spacesuits have seven layers of mylar, you know, like the shiny blankets that marathon runners use after a race. And electric heaters are put inside the astronauts' gloves. What happens if astronauts sweat, or sneeze, or cough, or... <laughs> astronauts work hard during spacewalks, but sometimes normal body functions get in the way. During a spacewalk, astronaut Eugene Cernan sweats so much that his helmet fogged up. Now we apply anti-fog chemicals to the helmets, but if it gets in your eye, it can sting like shampoo. And to soak up the sweat, astronauts wear absorbent pads on their heads, sort of like diapers. Sneezes? Well, that's a bit of a different story. When we sneeze on Earth, the air we blow out of our noses can travel at speeds of over 100 miles per hour. So you also have to think fast. Astronaut Dave Wolf recommends- Aim low. 
off the windshield because it can mess up your view and there's no way to clear it. That's how you do it. Are space suits reusable and does every astronaut get their own? What a great idea for a souvenir, but it's not going to happen. After all, spacesuits cost $10 million each. During the Apollo program, which took place from 1961 to 1975, each astronaut had three spacesuits, one for training, one for flight, and one as a backup. Those spacesuits were all basically one piece, so they were custom built for each of the astronauts. But later, they designed them with interchangeable parts for arms or legs. That interchangeable nature allowed the suits to be reused. Today, spacesuits are recycled and reused after missions are completed. Are there materials in spacesuits that regular people use? Yes! Spacesuits have 13 layers that all do different things, some of which you might be wearing right now. Cotton is an extremely common material, found in nearly everything from towels and bedding to the clothes like the shirt you have on today. Gore-Tex is a waterproof fabric used in jackets and boots. Kevlar is used in motorcycle jackets, rope, and bicycle tires. Neoprene is a very popular material for outdoor clothing, like boots, leggings, and wetsuits. Mylar is used in balloons and confetti, and in emergency blankets, like the ones these marathon runners are using. Nomex is used to protect firefighters from the intense heat of fire. Most of these materials were not developed specifically for spacesuits, but orthofabric was. Orthofabric is a combination of three materials, Gore-Tex, Kevlar, and Nomex, and it's meant to protect astronauts from the extreme temperatures of space and from small meteors and other junk floating out there. Uh, Houston, all floating questions have now been sent. Over. Touchdown confirmed. Thank you, everyone. Ha ha ha!